Okay, we finally escaped all the eucalyptus plantations down below. Uh, the eucalyptus is really bad here. And uh, we've encountered some of the uh, cool native flora. Here's Quisnellia lateralis, an epic bromeliad with a flower spike that looks like one of those uh, Fourth of July popsicles. Look at that, blue flowers. Just a little tube for a hummer to stick their beak into and get it going. Get the serrations on the leaf blades, yeah. You know, just forming pups too. Growing on a giant boulder. Look at that beautiful specimens of Ericaria angustifolia. We're at about 1,600 meters elevation. So what's that? What's that? About 5,000 feet? Maybe a little more. And we're gonna keep going up. And then growing on the side of the road here, we got a species of fuchsia, which is uh, you can see those opposite leaves right there, which is obviously going for Hummer pollination. You can see they, uh, it seems like they're protogynous first, so they're, uh, or protogynous, however you want to pronounce that. That the style is poking out first, and the stamens are still included inside that corolla, which is just barely open. And then as it uh, opens, you can see the uh, petals are fused into that little purple tube. Uh, probably ample nectar at the uh, end of that tube, deep inside that tube, and those are the sepals right there, showy as hell. And of course, since it's an evening primrose family, Ona Gracie, the pollen, uh, it's got that cobwebby kind of pollen. Vicin thread pollen. Look at it. Draping those anthers. You can see these ones are just starting to dehiss right now. These anthers are just starting to dehiss. Aracaria angustifolia. Always so pleasant to be around. These massive bastard trees. Evolved in the Triassic. Look at all the Talansias covering this thing, too. <laughs> That's hilarious. God. Lichens. There's a nice example of the habit. Almost looking like a mushroom. Very cold tolerant too, it froze last night. Aracaria aracana, which is the only other species in the family that you get in South America, uh, is also very cold tolerant. That grows in Chile. Look at the insular birds. Looks nice with those big granite masses, those granite knobs in the background. There's the seed too, which is edible. The female cones sit upright on the plants. The plants are unisexual and uh, the seeds just disintegrate. The cones just disintegrate, dropping the seeds everywhere. I wonder how old that is. How many hundreds of years? Look, you could see that nice granite dome. See that? That Inselberg back there, just behind the clouds. You know, see how they just send out the whorls of branches all at the same node? Like it grows in segments. Norfolk Island pine, which is a relative of this and not a pine at all, does the same thing. Look at that, nothing in between the nodes. Just sends out the, you know, five or six branches all at the same level. Then grows another two or three feet, sends out uh, more branches. Very mean foliage, too, as you can see. Very spiky. And you can see there's the dongs right there. Ericaria dongs. Most Ericaria, I think there's a little bit less than 20 species. Uh, primarily, they're all southern hemisphere. Primarily in Australia, you get two species in uh, South America. Uh, most are carry dioecious that are male or female. This is evidently a male, unless it's monoecious. I think Bidwillii, Ericaria Bidwillii from Queensland is the only uh, monoecious one. But either way, uh, you know, there you go. There's a dong, a little pollen cone, a microstrobolus. And uh, the uh, female cones sit upright on the, uh, they're a, big, a, a ton plumper. And they sit upright on a branch and then disintegrate, put the seeds everywhere. Seeds are edible. Yeah, here's the base of that Eric Carey, <laughs> that massive bastard. Look at that, it looks like a spinal column with those segments. Ah, just covered in, what is that, a pleopelthus or something? I don't fucking know. Put that bark anywhere, that distinctive bark, all right? All bubbly and wordy and what this shit. Look at that, look at that giant one right there. Beautiful bark, huh? Looks just like Bidwillii, which you get in Queensland, Australia. It's a quite a far disjunction, huh? South America and Australia, but you got to remember everything was united, you know, in one uh, supercontinent named Gondwana 80 million years ago. Maybe a little bit more. This dog's been hanging out. Oh, he's pissed off. I don't know where that dog went. Anyway, I wonder how old this thing is. It's got to be 300 years old at least, maybe older. A lichen that looks like a fungus. Look at that. God damn, that's crazy. That's a beautiful, that is a beautiful lichen, goddammit. Look how flimsy it is. See that? See that? See those juicy blue metallic fruits? See that? Just going for the bird dispersal. No idea how they taste. Ooh. Ooh. It's kind of nice. 
extremely wet forest. It's winter here, so it's a little chilly. You got a passive floor right there. Or is that a cucurbit? Jesus Christ. God, that's hilarious. That's a fucking lobelia. I think it's fistulosa. It might be brasiliensis. There's three species that have purple, pinkish purple flowers that all look the same. Uh, I saw another species that had much narrower leaves down below, but also had pink flowers, long pedicels as well. But this is just hummingbird paradise. I mean, look at those fucking flower spikes, man. The seeds, of course, are tiny. wonder if that's how lobelias got all around the world. should see some of the tree lobelias on Kilimanjaro. Well, they're not really trees. They're like this. They're tall as hell. But, you know, fucking Tanzania and Kenya. High elevation tropics and subtropics have a lot of crazy lobelia diversity, not to mention Hawaii. I'm moving slow as hell, man. There's no... <laughs> there's no... Talk about a botanist pace. Fuzzy leaves, and they kind of stink because they got toxins in them. So don't go smoking that stuff, all right? Look at that fucking, look at that rad. This goddamn fern. Look at the sorry. Wonder if it's teradaisy. Clusters of sporangia on the margins. <laughs> Just insane. Yeah, the sun's gonna set on my ass. That's all right, I got a flashlight. Got another interesting uh, tree nightshade, maybe more of a bush. Here's those little tomato flowers right there. Here's uh, another one that I actually cut open. You can see it's, uh, hey, maybe the light's kind of shit. I'll put a photo up. I cut two of those five anthers away and uh, it's got little pores, it's got anther pores. All solanums have porocidal anthers. So they don't split open, they've just got a little hole at the end. And then bees pollinate them by doing buzz pollination. Over here we got a species of Syphocampalus, which is uh, a lobeliad. As you can clearly see from the flower, you get that, uh, Fused anther tube like you'd have in Asteraceae, same order, Asterales. Campanulaceae's the family. Lobelioid calis, see with those fused sepals, and uh, they got like a little ridge just beneath them. And uh, of course that blue fused anther tube and then the pollen presenter, that bifid pollen presenter, that style pushing pollen out of that fused anther tube uh, and then becoming receptive to pollen just like individual florets of uh, members of the sunflower family, Asteraceae. And this is obviously going for hummingbird pollination because hummers can hover. You got opposite leaves and a red stem and it just grows scandent. Another impressive lobelioid. Ooh, it's getting chilly up here. You got lichen on all the rocks. It's a dwarf bamboo. Look at that. More bamboo diversity than you could shake a stick at. Nice anthurium, anthurium belodii, growing on the edge of this sketchy ledge. There's a uh, bilaterally symmetrical red flower over there, obviously going for hummingbird pollination. Certainly looks like it, it's got a fuzzy calyx, but uh, I can't uh, I can't get to it, obviously, it's just too sketchy. Tons of zygopetalum orchid everywhere. That anthurium really likes these uh, rocky outcrops. Oh Christ, gotta crawl up here on my hands and knees. I don't wanna break your ass. Dwarf bamboo, god damn, just incredible, man. It's like uh, it's like a botanist, uh, botanist uh, Disneyland. Well, I don't, I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of Disneyland. I guess a buffet. It's like a cheap, somewhat healthy buffet of uh, plant diversity. You know, gotta go for affordable and healthy because you rarely get the same two things together. Look at this nice big vein of quartz and it's granite. Real old rocks here, older than, older than you get in most places in North America. Real nice anthurium. Got a cool member of, uh, I presume, Teridaceae. You flip it over, it's a little fern. Flip it over, you get those revolute margins uh, on those leaves, which uh, those pseudo indusia, the false indusium. Indusium is just a, you know something that protects the sorry where all the uh, all the spores come out, but check out this pseudo bulb on this uh, zygopetalum orchid. If you can see it down there, you got see some nice pseudo bulbs. There's better examples I could show you. Anyway, a pseudo bulb, as many orchids can have, uh, enables them to tolerate uh, these somewhat dry environments because these environments, you're on a rock right here, it could dry out very easily, especially in the summer. It's winter right now, so. It's chilly, but imagine how hot it must get here, especially on the rock at least. Uh, you know, just exposed to the blazing sun all day. 
So that's what uh, a pseudobulb is an adaptation for. And a lot of orchids have pseudobulbs. It's just a bulbous swelling at the base of all those leaf blades. So you can kind of see one right there. See that? It's a nice pseudobulb. God, that's a fucking banger of a, of a flower right there. Oh my God. Doesn't look like the anther cap's been removed yet. Yeah, I hope it doesn't start raining. I think it's just gonna do fog for now. Hate to go down this in the rain. But, uh, you know, you gotta see some nice stuff. It's crazy, this is winter. And there's so much stuff going up. I wonder what summer is like. Look at all that vapor. Look at that, that's one way to do a lantana. If that is indeed the genus, it's certainly Verbenaceae, but uh, you never know. I mean, it pretty much is a lantana, or it's a genus closely related to it. Look at those flowers. Little tubes, what pollinates this? Some sort of moth or a butterfly? How's it smell? Like the lantana? We get, oh yeah, it's got a nice fragrance. Just like the lantana we get in North America. Even the horticultural atrocity lantana. God damn, it's nice though. Oh, the vapor's coming in now. God damn, look at, look at all the bromeliads down there. You got Alcantharia, Imperialis down there. I don't see any. It's a big one. Easy to notice. Bamboo's loving it. Varegias are loving it. Still got a little bit of sunlight left. Oh, that thing I thought was a Gisneriad is actually a Salvia. It appears to be. Look at that hood. It's a little style poking out. Gotta look at the anthers inside. Oh, I see lever mechanisms. See that? Bunch of ants inside, too, getting that nectar. That nectar's meant for the hummingbirds that pollinate these things, you thieves. Two stamens, one style, and of course those levers that kind of bend down uh, once the humming, hummingbird sticks its beak in there, and thus the hummer's head would pollen. I expect to see this here. Here's the species of paintbrush, genus Castilea, which is so species-rich in North America, obviously going for hummer pollination. Those red things are not flowers. They're just the bracts that subtend the flower like you could see there. Did not expect to see this genus in the Atlantic forest of uh, coastal Rio State, Brazil. There's the actual flower. You can see I peeled it back. It's green, kind of nondescript. Those uh, those red bracts that subtend the flowers are uh, what's actually lure and pollinators in there. Then you got the, the calyx, which is right there. I peeled that apart and then that thing right there that you're looking at there, that uh, green stuff, that's the actual fused corolla. Those are the petals. So petals and then a somewhat the uh, purple calyx, the sepals, and then those red bracts subtending. You can see there's those four stamens with the uh, white pollen just dipping out and you got a little green style up top. Wonder what the hell species this is. Pretty unique. A damn melastome. This we got a vining muticioid composite. You can tell because when you look at those individual florets, those individual flowers, that the, the white thing right there, you can see it's only got two corolla lobes, not five like most North American members do. You got a Gomeza crispa, a nice orchid with two flower spikes or uh, two uh, racemes, excuse me, and a big, uh, a big pseudo bulb. Well, right, we got an erythrina. Okay, in the in the United States, these are just shrubs. Here, they're giant fucking trees, it's like a giant living hummingbird feeder. Get that red flower banner petal, wings, and then this, all the stamens inside there. Some peeled this off though, because that ovary's in there too, and that should be uh, maturing into a little little bean pod fruit. Lots of nice native bamboos here. All right, kind of shrubby though. They don't, I haven't seen like the giant ones, the Asian ones you get that are a uh, plant that horticulture in people's yards. Look at that, Alcantaria imperialis. You can see just hanging off that uh, rock scarp right there. Massive bastard. As big around as a track tire, tractor tire. He's poised and ready to go. They don't like it when you touch that. Uh, when you touch that stick, you know you see they they get all mad. They get they they, they get mad. They all come out. Massive ant nest. See, you just stick a put a stick in there, pull it out. You smell that. It smells like formic acid. It smells like vinegar, kind of pretty cool. But they're mad now. See, they don't they don't want to. They don't they don't like me. So I'm gonna get out of here. And right here we got that anthurium. I believe it's the same species we were seeing down below, but you could see it's got a spadix out. It's got a rot out, but it's not, uh, it doesn't look like it's flowering yet. Or maybe it already has. No, no, it hasn't flowered yet. Nice texture to that rot. And don't forget the sedge. Those inflorescences, you could see those stamens 
popping out those little uh, spikelets. And then of course we got uh, Alcantaria imperialis right there. Get the ribs on those leaf blades, the striations. Bromeliads over there, holy hell. Look at that thing, it's a tank. It's a tank bromeliad, it's got water in there. Pretty stiff leaves. I thought this was Proteaceae. We've seen it, just from the foliage. It's got that kind of plasticky feeling foliage. And kind of fucked up venation. No offense to the plant, you know, it's still beautiful. But Proteaceae have that kind of weird venation to them. Looks like a... I don't know how to describe it. They just, you know, they got it. They got a, uh, a gestalt. But anyway, there's a flower spike, and there's those fruits. And Proteaceae, it is woody fruits, woody follicles. Over here, we got an even weirder plant from the Barnadesioid subfamily of Asteraceae. This is a species of Dasyphylum, one of the quote-unquote dinosaur sunflowers. I call them that because it's the most early branching lineage of the family. You can see it's got spines on it, and uh, it's, uh, you know, if you were to do a DNA sequence of this, it would be missing the, uh, if you were to do a genome sequence, it would be missing that uh, 22,000 uh, base pair inversion that the rest of the family has. Just a, a flip in the, you know, 22,000 base pairs of DNA sequence. The Barnadesioids don't have that. Who's that, Donner? Oh, you got a black vulture down there. Look, he's lurking. What's he doing over there? Oh, he just took a shit. That's nice. You find some nice roadkill down there? You could see they got a little tree plantation. There's fucking people everywhere, man. It's a bummer. It's either cunning hamia. It looks like a conifer. Whatever it is, it's non-native. See, they got a little guest house and stuff. A little bed and breakfast. There's a single road in there. Shouldn't be anything in here. Like a little uh, nephalium, a pseudonephalium, asteraceae. And an incredibly sketchy cliff that uh, <laughs> you can't step off the... Wonder what the shit that is. That looks interesting over there. More just bromelia diversity up the ass. Look at that veresia up there. See that? That inflorescence coming off. God, it's overwhelming, man. The diversity here. And yeah, this is granite. You just can't see the surface because it's covered in lichen. Even that black stuff is alive. A beautiful view of that erythrina in full flower. The sun came out. It stopped raining. In everything, the terrain is just sketchy as fuck. It's just... Uh. Yeah, I'm not trying to do it. Here's a weird family. Velosiaceae, Order Pandanales, which you're not going to be familiar with if you're from uh, the Northern Hemisphere, for especially the United States, but this is a Barbicinia squamata. It's a narrow endemic, only grows in two or three places, and you can see there's those... the flowers right there. It's not flowering right now, but you can see the old spikes. I'm not trying to go over there though. Look at the individual florets that had Dacephylum. Multiseriate phyloris, and then you got, look at a pappus. Barnadesioide, the subfamily, has really weird uh, pappus hairs. Look at that. Five corolla lobes up top on those white flowers. Long styles, ending in the characteristic Y shape of Asteraceae, but uh, little uh, spinose ends to those leaves. God, it's so cool, man. It's such cool habitat. Jesus Christ. This concludes our lecture for today. That grass down there is, you know, above my neck. I don't feel like getting lost in a corn maze just before sundown. Nice half knob. Incredible habitat, incredible plants, underappreciated, understudied. But uh, who knows? Maybe that's for the better, you know? Oh, there's a trail right there. Maybe I'll just do that. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Look at this sketchy bullshit. It's always scarier going down than it is up. <laughs> fuck it. It's just these little iron bars.